Talking Points Memo has a story here on a new enemy that Donald Trump made. They say, quote, a billionaire hedge fund manager known for contributing huge sums to Republican candidates cautioned Wednesday that Donald Trump's economic policies effectively guaranteed a depression. All right, let me pause there. So that was, you know, uh, in line with what the headline was on Talking Points Memo. Like, a billionaire Republican donor warns a Trump, elect, a Trump presidency will lead to depression or something like that. So when I read the headline, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Let me read through it and see the arguments that are made because I was expecting to actually agree with the Republican donor and go, that's true. Like, for example, Donald Trump said not that long ago that he would just make a deal on our debt and he has no problem with letting the U.S. default on its debt. Okay, that is something that would lead to a worldwide depression. Uh, that is something that's not something we can risk. That's crazy. That's insane. That's lunacy. That shouldn't even be an option. That shouldn't be on the table. The dollar is the world reserve currency. It's, you know, safe harbor for uh, investors around the world. If you blow this up, there's no safe investment. You're really talking about a, a global depression here. So I thought that that's the argument that they were going to make. No, not the argument that this billionaire made. The argument this billionaire made is 100% wrong. So, Paul Singer is the billionaire, and he said, The most impactful of the economic policies that I recall him coming out for are these anti-trade policies. And I think if he actually stuck to those policies and gets elected president, it's close to a guarantee of a global depression, widespread global depression. Okay. <laughs> Yet again, now I have to come out here and defend Donald Trump because the dumbass arguments you're using against him are dumb. So that is nowhere near true. The United States was in better shape when we did protectionism, when we didn't have so-called free trade deals, which are just outsourcing deals, which shipped all our good jobs overseas. Look at what happened uh, in Detroit, for example. I mean, we used to have great jobs there with uh, car companies. Well, the car companies decided, hey, let's buy the politicians. Let's make it so that these politicians allow us to ship all these good jobs elsewhere so we can pay people less, so we have cheaper labor, we pad the bottom line more, we get richer, sure, we screw over the American people, but who gives a fuck, and then everything will be great. And that's what happened. And you have NAFTA pushing us in that direction. You have the World Trade Organization pushing us in that direction. You have permanent normal trade relations with China pushing us in that direction. And the list goes on and on. Panama Free Trade Agreement, Colombia Free Trade Agreement. I mean, these are things that Democrats and Republicans, the establishment agreed, oh yeah, this is great, let's sell this to the American people as if it's going to help them. And what happened? Every single time more U.S. jobs got shipped elsewhere and we drove down wages in the U.S., ticked up unemployment, factories shut down all over the place, and you piss the people off, and they should be pissed off, because the whole idea was to make the elites richer, the captains of industry richer, while everybody else gets fucked. So Trump comes along and he goes, you know what? And by the way, I don't believe him that he actually believes this, but he's riding the populist wave. What does he say? You know what? All these deals are bad. I think TPP, which is the next horrific trade deal, that's the rape of our country. So... We need to stop with this. We need to go in the opposite direction. Yeah, this is one of the things that makes him popular. This is one of the reasons why he won in a Republican party where everybody's like, oh, let's ship out more jobs. He goes up there, he's like, are you stupid? No, seriously, are you stupid? Like, are you slow? I don't, how do you, why would you say that? No, I'm not going to cut Social Security. I'm not going to cut Medicare. And yeah, I'm against TPP. I'm against these free trade deals. They've screwed over the American people. He comes out and says that. And what does the establishment do? Oh, they're so arrogant, and they're so smug, and they're so sure that everything is going good for everybody else because it's going good for them, that idiots like Paul Singer go out there and go, Yeah, you know, uh, I think that it would cause a global uh, depression and it would be a downturn if we actually gave a fuck about American workers and uh, implemented anti-trade policies. No! That's one of the few things that when Trump talks about it and uses his rhetoric on it, He's a hundred percent right! So I'm, again, I'm warning everybody out there. Note to the establishment. If you think that the establishment lining up behind Hillary Clinton makes her more popular, you're dead wrong and makes her less popular because nobody likes you! But they don't know that because they can't 
they're blinded. They're blinded by their current situation and they're living in their own bubble. So they, I mean, Paul Singer thinks, wait a second, I'm doing great. So I, I just assume everybody in my circle's doing great. We're all rich. We're all hedge fund managers. Everything's going fantastic. I summer in the Hamptons. They just assume everybody else is doing well. They're not. They're not doing well. So when you use arguments like this, it comes across as bullshit because it is bullshit. And this makes people flock to Trump more. I mean, another example of this, you've had prominent neoconservatives, one after the other, after the other, after the other, all come out in favor of Hillary Clinton, do big announcements about it, and they act like this should help her. Like they think, no, no, seriously. If I come out and I say I'm for Hillary Clinton, well, that's going to be great. George W. Bush's Treasury Secretary came out in favor of Hillary Clinton and announced it as if people gave a fuck what he had to say and announced it as if he's popular and people agree with his take. Dude, nobody likes you. Neocons, nobody likes you. Nobody likes your unnecessary, stupid, ridiculous wars that massacre giant numbers of civilians that you're callous and don't give a fuck about. Nobody likes your war profiteering for all the Republican billionaire hedge fund managers that are like, I will take a principal stand against Trump. Nobody thinks it's principled because it ain't. Because the actual reason you're against Trump is not the xenophobia, is not the bigotry, is not the crazy comments about, let's bring back torture. It's not, hey, the Geneva Conventions is the problem. It's not, hey, let's kill civilians in the Middle East. You don't care about any of that shit. The one time you go, oh, this may be a problem, is when he says, maybe we should bring back jobs to the U.S. and not continue to outsource everything. Oh, now I'm outraged. Now let me say I'm against Trump. Oh, I'm so brave, aren't I? No, you're not brave. You're part of the fucking problem. So everybody in the establishment, all the neoconservatives, all the Democratic establishment hacks, all the Republican establishment hacks, the Republican billionaires who are like, oh, I'm against Trump. It doesn't mean dick because you're all against him for the wrong reasons. You don't make good arguments against him. Your arguments are not based in a genuine humanitarian concern for the world and they're not based in real substantive policy disagreement because you think X, Y, or Z would be better for the American people. It's all based off greed. It's all based off greed and arrogance and stupidity and you living in your own bubble and you thinking the one area where Trump's rhetoric is right is an area where he's wrong. No, no, no. It ain't gonna work, man. You're just making him stronger when you make these arguments. You're just making him stronger. Nobody likes you. Nobody should like you. You never give a fuck about the American people. And you're turning this monstrous human being, Donald Trump, into somebody that looks appealing because you're an even bigger monster and you don't even fucking realize it.